Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin Choquette, registered dietitian, host of this year's Chef's Table, um, put on by the Downtown Windsor Farmer's Market. Last year was our first year doing live demos at the market and it was great. We had many talented local chefs come out, sharing their skills with us, teaching us how to make um, some really yummy dishes, uh, all from the fresh ingredients found at the market. This year we're doing things a little bit differently. We are doing the same great demos, only virtually now. So today I'm in Time Kitchen in Walkerville on Shilver Street, and I've got Chef Julie Myers here that's going to teach you how to make something delicious. Julie? Hi, so yes, I'm Chef Julie Myers. I own Time To Go in Walkerville and Time Kitchen downtown. Um, we, I was so excited to go to the market yesterday um, and found these beautiful products, but mostly I was excited about finding these little squash blossoms. Um, there's something that not everybody's seen before or used before, so I thought it would be really fun to kind of show you a quick um, an easy kind of appetizer or maybe a salad garnish. So we're going to do stuffed uh, fried zucchini blossoms. Um, and then we can kind of talk about all the produce and, and things that I found at the market. So I've already done these ones here. But just to show you, squash blossoms are obviously very, very delicate. So you have to be very careful. Um, but you want to pull them apart just slightly. And then inside there is a little kind of like... The, the middle of the um, blossom that you kind of want to take out. So you can uh, just use your finger to push it, kind of open it, and then squish it out. And then you kind of want to just take a look. So I've already just rinsed these off very delicately, but you do want to look inside the squash blossom because unfortunately sometimes you'll find um, little bugs in there and things like that. So but that's all you have to do to prepare them. Then I'm just gonna move on making basically the filling. So anything you wanna stuff this, this uh, squash blossom with, you can. My favorite is to do kind of like a creamy filling. So we just honestly found so many beautiful products that um, I think it would be fun just to play around with uh, different vegetables and kind of keep this a vegetarian option. It doesn't have to be. Um, but it would be, I thought it would be kind of fun if we kept it vegetarian for this section. So beautiful green onions or red onions that we found from uh, Northridge Greens. And um, I always love green onions because you get the beautiful crunchiness of the green onion, the freshness that I kind of save for afterwards. I don't typically cook green onions too, too often. I usually kind of throw them in at the end. And then I also get the little bulb, which I kind of just use to saute everything up first. So I just cut that up. So whenever you have these onions, it's kind of like you get two for one. You get a little bit of the base, which you can kind of use to start your dish. And then you get the tops that you can kind of use to finish your dish. So I'm going to saute those up. Obviously, we went to the mushroom hub and found the most beautiful mushrooms. Um, so this is what he calls his chicken mushroom. Um, it's a really hearty mushroom. It's very hard um, and it's going to have very good texture. So we're just going to chop that up. So I'm going to just start with those onions really, really quickly. Okay, and then we're going to add the mushroom here. So I have three different kinds of mushrooms and I'm going to start with the heartier of the three and add that at the beginning so it can kind of cook down, kind of get a nice, kind of like brownish to it, like start start taking away some of the... So whenever we're talking about this, we always say like the harder the mushroom, the sooner it goes into the pot. So something like that would be um, a little bit before the other mushrooms that we have. Um, I found some beautiful zucchini and eggplant from Sunshine produce they did a really great job they had like a um, like a smaller variety but super flavorful super fresh so I'm adding that eggplant in okay and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt I think adding salt at each stage is important it helps the vegetables cook down a little bit and whenever I use eggplant, you do need to tend to use, because it's so spongy, sometimes the mushrooms as well, you do want to use just a bit more oil. Okay, so we have all that sauteing down. Zucchini is a little bit of a softer vegetable, um, so I tend to put that in a little bit after everything else. 
Um, sometimes you get um, the zucchini, it has like the seeds in it. What I do is I just cut around it a lot of times. The seeds sometimes can tend to be bitter. Uh, doesn't mean you don't, you can't use the zucchini whatsoever. Just, I kind of cut around it depending on what I do. Um, and then if I use it for like zucchini bread or something like that, I just kind of grate around it as well. But it's super flavorful and beautiful in color. So zucchini goes in the pan. Okay. Always adjusting my temperature, right? Then I'm just gonna take my other mushrooms, cut them down. And then just give them like a really nice rough chop. Again, I'm, I'm not particular about this filling. It doesn't have to be super complicated. You just wanna make, you know, just have some really great flavors in there. So adding all these vegetables together is gonna do that. Um, then my taki mushrooms next. Again, I just kind of cut down with it and it basically cuts itself. Like it's so fresh and delicate. So again, this is gonna go at the end of my cooking time. Add these guys in. So we're gonna saute those up. Then once they, everything comes out of the pan, we're gonna add a little bit of the green onion. So we'll just cut that and we'll get that ready to put in our bowl here. All right, so next step to um, what we wanna put into our uh, filling is gonna be, so the cheese bar, it was impossible to choose just a one cheese to choose from them. Um, so we got three. Um, this is a goat cheese pesto. So it's a creamy goat cheese pesto. Um, they call it the um, Elias. And basically it's gonna be the base of what we're doing. So we're gonna, that's gonna give us our creamy texture. And then I have a bunch of different cheeses. So we have the Gouda goat that we got from them, as well as the Alfred, So then, which is a mix, mixture of two other goat cheeses. So it kind of gonna give some different textures and variety, but it's also gonna like, once it's heated up, it'll kind of stay a little bit creamy and um, you know stringy to kind of give us that texture from it. All right, and then the vegetables should be ready here. So we're just gonna throw these guys in. You can put anything, like saute some spinach, tomatoes, anything you want to see. There's pesto already in this goat cheese, so that's going to be a really nice flavor combination. Um, so basically the, the middle is going to be pesto-y. So basil, tomatoes, everything goes so well together. You could put sun-dried tomatoes inside. Anything that you would love as like a dip, you can definitely put into this squash blossom. So then we just basically have to uh, stuff them. So I have quick and easy little piping bag here. If you don't have one of these at home, you can use a Ziploc bag. I just always cut off that tip. I make sure I put this away. Okay, and then um, filling a piping bag is super easy or anything that you're using. Basically take um, something that's a larger container, put your hand through, and you just kind of want to squish that bag down, flip over the sides. And then you have like perfect vessel for you to be able to put your ingredients in. Okay. From this, so that has all of my goat cheese, my regular cheese that's already been grated um, and everything else. So then I'm just gonna take my blossom. You do have to be careful. This, it's a very, del it's a flower, right? So it's a very, very delicate. So just putting the piping tip in, filling it to about half full. And then basically what you wanna do is take those little flower petals and turn them. Then you just set it aside. You can do one more. So again, you just kinda open up your blossom, put your piping tip in, fill it about halfway and then give it, give it a turn. Because this is the magic of uh, TV, we already have our tempura batter ready. So we have basically just made a basic tempura batter, nice cold water in that batter, mixed it in, so it is ready to go. Um, I also had my oil just heating on the stove. Um, not really much of a trick. Obviously, you want to dredge, dredge the base. And then you're going to want to put it down, just like you would think. You're going to put the base down first as that fries off a little bit. I always say like fish like to swim, so you wanna kinda swim your blossom into the oil and then slowly put it down. Okay, and we'll do that one more time with this blossom. So again, dredge it just like you would. Obviously you don't wanna like put it upside down because then the filling will fall out. So you just wanna give it a dredge. I always give it a little tap 
And then as I'm putting it in the oil, I'm just slowly being very cautious, slowly moving it around. This just prevents it from um, getting stuck to the bottom. Um, you could definitely use, I'm using just a shallow pot. It's just easier for this small amount, but it is a little bit more dangerous. So a uh, deep fryer at home would work for sure. Or if you have an outdoor one, you can use that as well. Now for people at home, how much oil do you have to put in that pot? Just so they're not. So it's only about two inches. And again, um, we're using a higher pot so that if, so the oil will never go over the sides, but I wouldn't do much more of that. Like this is, you know, something that you would probably stay away from, but for small purposes, you'd never leave this unattended. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your location? So you've got two locations in Windsor. Yeah, so we have our Walkerville location that currently isn't um, open to the public. So what it's doing is prepared foods and catering still. Um, however, um, we're just delivering to people's doors or they can they can pick up at a, um, at a certain time, but it does have to be pre um pre-arrange. Basically you order on Monday and we'll deliver it to you on Tuesday. So about 24 hours notice any day of the week. We post our menus um, online, social media, Instagram and Facebook, um, both locations. So Time uh, Kitchen Windsor is our handle for Instagram downtown and Time to Go um, on Facebook and Instagram are there as well. Um, and then the restaurant is currently open. So we're open from 8.30 till 2.30, Monday through Friday. We're excited to extend our hours um, the weekend of July 24th. Downtown uh, BIA has arranged for the Olette to be closed again. So we're gonna be, have a huge extended patio again and we're gonna be doing brunch and we're gonna extend our hours that weekend as well. So we're basically getting back into it July 24th if all goes well. And that downtown location is such a great spot. So you've got the river right there. The view is great. And then you always have like a nice little uh, breeze from the riverfront. So these don't take long at all. You just want to make sure that the outside is nice and crunchy because the middle is going to be creamy and delicious. So everything that comes in the fire, you want to give it a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Okay. So these are extremely hot. <laughs> so I will say be very careful. Um, and then we're just going to put them over some of those greens that we got from Northridge Greens. Wow, these look beautiful, Julie. Okay, I'm going to give you this. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, it looks beautiful. And this is something you could easily do at home. And let's try it out here. All right, so we'll try this one first. Ooh. Yeah, you can see the mix of textures. We've got crispy on the outside. Nice and soft on the inside. Yeah. Let's see how this tastes. Maybe give Wait it a... for it to cool off a yeah, little bit. I don't want to burn myself. Let's see. Hot mm. but good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. That's so delicious. Wow. So many flavors in there. Great. Well, thank you so much, Julie. Um, this was great. And uh, hopefully um, Julie's inspired some of you to try um testing zucchini flowers out at home. I've never cooked with them, so now I'm looking forward to, to trying this out myself. So if you haven't already, make sure to go downtown to the market. It's um, every Saturday, open from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. It runs rain or shine all the way through to the end of October, um, which is incredible. And it's got such a wide variety of things there, so you really gotta go and, and see it yourself. They've done an incredible job of um, keeping everyone safe and healthy with the um, health and safety guidelines. Um, so it's pretty amazing. And if you want more information about the market, you can go online to www.downtownwindsor.ca slash farmers market. You can also follow the market on Instagram. The handle is DWF market. So be sure to do that. Um, I would really like to thank the city of Windsor for sponsoring the chef's table for a second year now through the arts, culture and heritage fund. So that's pretty amazing. Thank you, city of Windsor. All right, well, I hope to see everyone downtown at the market and happy cooking. Thanks, Julie.